Hello there, it's me, Gus, and I trust that you've already subscribed so that you'll know when I have new things. Today, I wish to address something. I came across an article that somebody wrote, they didn't put their name to it. It says, can Trinitarians receive the seal of God? And it's a rather rude article because it says that if you don't believe like anti-Trinitarians do, well, then you can't go to heaven. That's the short of it. And it's a beautiful example of poor writing. There's sweeping statements. The author talks here of many Trinitarians and a common excuse. Well, how many Trinitarians does the author know? I mean, what is many? Is it 10? Is it 20? Is it thousands? Because I know of many Trinitarians that are more than willing to discuss what the Bible tells us about God. I have never heard of a Trinitarian using that common excuse. You see, I don't know all the Trinitarians, so I can't really use the word many. There's a lot of highlighting and bolding in the texts. And I particularly don't like this because I find it manipulative. Because when I write something, every word has equal weight in its particular context in the sentence. So to highlight and bold and underline certain words is to unbalance the sentence or the passage that you wish to quote because now you are pushing your ideas instead of what the author actually intended. And this article speaks of a Trinity God. There is no such thing as a Trinity God. If you knew your subject matter you would know that Trinitarians speak of a triune God. And this describes how we understand God's nature, not how we designate God. And I want to look at this big problem, because on the one side, those that hold to the Trinitarian view claim that there is one God that consists of three persons. The anti-Trinitarians claim that they speak of one God and he is one person. The problem arises, how then do we deal with Jesus Christ? Biblical monotheism is perhaps best described in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. And it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Now I want to focus on that word one today because that is what monotheism is about. There's one God. And you see, the question I want to pose is, can I go to heaven if I don't believe in one God? This particular word, one, in Hebrew is echat, and it can have different meanings, several of them. It can mean united, one, first, or only. You see, and in this very article, the passage is quoted from Hebrews 1 verse 9, which says, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Now, the claim in the article is that Jesus is acknowledging the Father as his God, so the Father must be greater. But it's not that simple, because the passage says, God, your God. Jesus is designated as God, and the Father is designated as God. So how can Christ be called God and the Father God at the same time? Now, I want to look at this biblical monotheism, the Ichat, the one God. Which, and I'm going to focus on three meanings of the word. One, only, and first. 